in our previous section uh, we have discussed about uh, some basic uh, uh, stuff that was mandatory before we start the uh, packet flow into cisco aci so now today let's start with our first case so we have uh, three endpoints here ep1 ep2 and ep3 and the IP address of EP1 is 10.1.1.1 .1 .1 here. Its MAC address is A. EP2, its IP address is 20.1.1.1. .1 its MAC address is C. And we have endpoint 3, which is having the IP address of 10.1.1.2 .1 .1 and its MAC address is B. All of the three endpoints, they are having the subnet mask of slash 24. Endpoint one and endpoint three, uh, which are in range of 10, they have the default gateway configured, which is 10.1.1.24. Sorry, 10.1.1.254 slash 24. And endpoint two, it is having the default gateway of 20.1.1.254 slash 24. So it means that we have two bridge domains. So we have BD1 here and BD1 here, which belongs to subnet of 10. So on BD1, if you uh, see here, we have configured these uh, subnets under the bridge domain. So for BD1, this is uh, 10.1.1.254, which is the default gateway of the uh, endpoints uh, EP1 and EP3, and then we have configured the subnet 20. Dot or the IP address 20.1.1.254 slash 24 as BD2, which is the default gateway for endpoint 2. So now in our case one, I'm assuming that each and every table, be it a leaf table or the spine coop database, everything is empty. There is nothing there uh, in the tables of uh, the fabric devices. So now let's start with case one wherein endpoint one wants to communicate to endpoint three. So first of all, when endpoint one wants to communicate to endpoint three, let's say endpoint one ping IP 10.1.1.2. Now, because endpoint one <clears throat> does not know about the MAC address of endpoint three. So now it is going to do an ARP request, right? To find out the MAC address of endpoint three. So I will not uh, elaborate uh, what is an ARP packet. So I'm assuming that we all know that uh, what are the different contents of ARP packet. So just uh, for the sake of uh, simplicity, I will put a simple IP address and MAC address schema. So this is our original packet. We have IP address 10.1, which is endpoint one. It's MAC address. So the field is not correct. Just give me one moment. So we have source IP. You can see here. So source IP is 10.1. Destination IP, we have. 10.2, then we have source make is A. And now we want to find out what is the destination MAC address, right? So endpoint one is now trying to find out the MAC address of endpoint three. Now in the bridge domain, when we configure the bridge domain, there is an option of R flooding. There is an option of are flooding that if we want to flood the ARP request or not. So there is a checkbox. If we click it, it means that we want to flood the ARP request. So in our first case, I'm assuming that, um, let's assume that ARP flooding is disabled. So it means that uh, we won't, we do not want uh, to flood the ARP request within the fabric. So having said that now, endpoint one will send this ARP packet to leaf one so leaf one let's say this is port number one by one this is port number one by two here we have port number one by three 
So now leaf one receives the packet on port number one by one, right? So first of all, leaf one in the endpoint table will create the entry for this particular traffic. So it will save the IP address, which is 10.1 on the source side and its MAC address is A, right? And it learned this particular information from one slash one interface. Also uh, in the rib of, uh, or the routing table of leaf one, as we know that we have the BD subnets configured, right? So in the routing, in the rib of, uh, leaf one there will be a one entry that we already discussed in our previous section there will be one entry for 10.1.254 uh, slash 32 and also there will be an entry for 10.1.1.0 slash 24 and the above entry this is called the pervasive gateway and the second entry in the rivet is called the pervasive route that we already discussed in detail in our previous section and the next hope of the pervasive route is the anycast tap address, right? We have three type of anycast tap address. First one is for the layer two uh, unknown uh, unicast traffic, right? And second one is for the ARP and layer three traffic. And third one is for the IPv6 traffic. So this is an ARP uh, traffic, right? So now, when leaf one receives this particular packet first of all it is going to uh, save this information in the endpoint table which it receives in the app packet which is the ip address of the source and the mac address of the source and the interface from which it uh, receives this particular packet now behind the scene uh, leaf one is going to uh, report this to spine so whenever a leaf switch uh, learns about the local endpoints. So it is going to report to the spine. So now spine knows that 10.1 and MAC address A, these are reported by leaf one. The VTAP address of leaf one is dot one. So leaf at uh, one VTAP address, I am assuming is uh, dot one. For leaf two, I assume that the tap address is dot two. Leaf three, I'm assuming that the tap address is dot three. And for spine one and two, the common anycast tap address for IPv4 traffic and R traffic, I'm assuming that it is dot 100. So leaf one uh, receives the traffic, R traffic from the endpoint one. It saves the information in the uh, endpoint table and it reports the same to the spine. So spine uh, database will be updated. So both these spines, uh, they will update their database using Coop. And now <clears throat> what will happen is that for leaf one, as we discussed in our previous lecture that whenever a leaf switch receives the traffic from the front panel, uh, front panel ports, then first of all, which table is going to be checked? The table which is going to be checked is the endpoint table. So this is the endpoint table of leaf one. And as we know that in our scenario that we are taking uh, right now, that the tables are empty. So leaf one does not know about the uh, destination so far, right? And because our flooding is disabled. So leaf one is going to look at the destination IP address from the R packet. So destination IP address is 10.1.1.2. So it is not available in the endpoint table. So the second criteria that will be checked is the routing table. So now leaf one is going to check the routing table. In the routing table, we already have a pervasive route for the subnet to which the destination IP 10.1.1.2 belongs, right? So we have a pervasive route 10.1.1.0 slash 24, which is pointing to the any cast type address of spine. So now 
leaf one needs to send this packet to spine. But we know that we have layer three domain, right? Within our fabric. So leaf one cannot directly send the packet to spine. First of all, it needs to uh, encapsulate the packet. So now let's see how it is going to encapsulate the packet. So the information which is here, this is this will be the original packet. Then we have the VXLAN. So in the VXLAN, a field needs to be populated here. So we have, uh, first of all, uh, as I discussed in our previous section also that whenever you are creating a bridge domain, so ACI Fabric is going to uh, assign a bridge domain VXLAN ID or the BDVNet to that particular bridge domain. So I'm taking a random, num uh, random number. So for BD1, the uh, VXLAN ID is 123. For BD2, the VXLAN ID is 456. And these uh, bridge domains, they are uh, belonging to a particular VRF. And uh, this also I uh, talked about that whenever you are creating the VRF, also a VRF VXLAN ID will also be generated. So now it depends that in the VXLAN field, whether we need to put the uh, BD VXLAN ID or the VRF uh, VXLAN ID. So now, because endpoint one and endpoint three, they are into the same subnet, right? So it means that it is a switching operation. So whenever uh, we have a switching operation, so the BD VNED will be added to this VXLAN ID field. So here we, we are going to add the BD uh, v vened which, which is one two three in the source ip uh, this is source ip outer address so source ip is the tap address of leaf one what is the tap address of leaf one which is it is dot one now we have the destination uh, ip outer address so the destination ip is the any cast tap address which is of the spine and it is dot hundred so now this will be our full packet and along with the VXLAN ID, uh, we, uh, the VXLAN ID that we put, it is also going to uh, put the EPG information to which this particular BD belongs to, right? So on this particular interface, we have some uh, EPG code. So I'm not going into that details that will, we can discuss later. So now the packet is generated. So now Spine will receive this particular packet, right? this VXLAN packet. Now, as we know that uh, in the spine database also, it does not have any information for the uh, destination, right? So first of all, the first packet spine is going to drop. Okay, so the first, pack, uh, the first packet is going to be dropped. Now, because uh, spine does not know about the uh, destination IP, it is going to generate a new packet, which is called the R glean packet. For which IP? For the destination IP, which is 10.1.1.2. So spine receives this particular packet and also it also does, does not know about the destination IP. So it is going to generate an R glean packet to find out that uh, where is this this particular IP address 10.1.1.2 and it is going to send to all the ports. So Spine is going to send this R clean packet to leaf one, leaf two and leaf three. All the leaf switches uh, which are connected to the Spine, it is going to send the R clean packet for this particular destination IP, which is 10.1.1.2. Now all the leaf switches when they receive this particular clean packet, so they they will uh, check their bridge domain uh, database. So this is the IP address for which Spine uh, sends the Glean packet, right? Our Glean packet. So now Leaf one, Leaf two, and Leaf three, they are going to find out if they have uh, a BD subnet, which which is uh, same as this particular destination IP, right? So Leaf one and Leaf three, 
both ha both is having the bridge domain which is of this particular subnet right because 10.1.1.2 also comes in the same subnet which is having uh, bd1 right but you can see on leaf 2 we do not have any uh, bridge domain in this particular uh, subnet so that is why leaf 2 is going to drop this r clean packet but because leaf 1 and leaf 3 they are having the uh, bridge domain into same subnet of the destination ip which they received from the spine into the glean packet r glean packet so once uh, they receive this packet, the job of uh, leaf one and leaf three is that they will generate a new ARP request. They will generate new ARP request and they will send to their downstream ports. And the source of this particular ARP request will be the, the source IP in this ARP request will be the BD IP. So the BD uh, IP is 10. 1.1.254 and destination will be the ip that they received into the glean packet which is 10.1.1 10.1.1.2 same is the case with leaf 3 leaf 3 will ge generate a new uh, arp request and it will send to its ports so the source ip of that particular arp request will be the bd subnet uh, ip or the bd ip and destination will be the destination IP that they received into the R plane. Now on leaf one, uh, there is no endpoint which is having this particular IP, right? 10.1.1.2. But on leaf three, we have endpoint three which is having this particular MAC address, right? So now endpoint three is going to reply. To leave three with its own MAC address, right? So now, when leave three receives this this particular uh, reply from endpoint three, it is going to populate its own table. So it will populate like this: that ten dot one dot one dot two and MAC address B. It receives from port number one slash three. And as soon as uh, leaf three uh, receives this uh, or uh, populated this information into the uh, endpoint table, it is going to report this particular information to the spine. So now spine will also update its own uh, database that 10.2, 10.1.1.2, and MAC address B, these are reported by leaf three, which is having tap address dot three. So now, uh, so far, at least two packets uh, will be dropped that uh, endpoint one did not get a, a reply for the ARP request. So now let's see that when the third packet comes, so let's clean it a bit. So when the third packet comes, so this time when the same uh, process uh, repeated, so this time when the uh, spine receives this particular packet, because the IP address 10.2 and MAC address B, it was reported by leaf three. So now instead of uh, dropping the packet, spine knows that 10.1.1.10.2, it is reported by leaf three, right? So that is why in the, uh, the VXLAN packet that uh, spine receives here, it is going to rewrite this packet and in the source IP, it is not going to change anything, but in the destination IP, so it will remove its IP dot hundred and it is going to put the IP of leaf three, which is dot three. So now uh, spine will send this. Per, uh, 
so i clean the drawing a bit uh, now let's quickly uh, see the third packet so when spine uh, receives uh, the third packet so now this time because uh, it knows where this particular destination ip uh, is residing so now it is going to uh, modify this particular packet so in the uh, in the packet there was the source ip which was 10.1 the source mac was a the destination ip was 10.2 and now it was looking for the mac address so in the vxlan id there was 123 for the bd unit and uh, the destination ip was dot 100 which was the spine address and uh, the source ip was the tap address of leaf one so now once uh, spine received this packet and now it knows that uh, 10.1.2 uh, it is reported by leaf three so now leaf uh, sorry spine one it is going to uh, edit this particular information which is the destination ip so the destination ip is the tab address of leaf three, right? Because in the Coop database, it already has the information that uh, 10.1.2 uh, or MAC address V, it is reported by leaf three. So that is why the destination IP address in the outer header, it will put the tab address of leaf three. So now, once uh, leaf three receives this particular packet, so leaf three receives this particular packet. So now leaf three is uh, going to decapsulate this packet, and now it has the uh, choice to save the MAC address or the uh, IP address. So in the packet, it has the uh, IP address information as well as the MAC address information from the source side. But it depends that which information it needs to store. So it is going to check the VXLAN ID field. And in the VXLAN ID field, it will find out that the VXLAN ID information is the BD, BD we need, right? Here. So because it is uh, the BD we need, it is only going to save the MAC address in its endpoint table. So it will save the information like this, that endpoint A, it leaves behind leaf one, which is having the tap address of dot one. So now leaf three is going to decapsulate this packet and uh, it will remove all the VXLAN or the fabric related information and it will send it to endpoint three. So endpoint three is going to reply back to leaf three. So now, because as we discussed that uh, when a leaf switch receives the traffic from the front uh, ports or the front panel ports, first of all, which table uh, is going to be checked? The table which is going to be checked is the endpoint table, which is this one, right? And in the endpoint table, because it is a switching operation, it is going to find out that uh, this particular traffic is for MAC A. And it knows that where this particular MAC address uh, is residing. So now the uh, packet that leaf three is going to create is like this. So this IP will be changed. So now the source ip it will be 10.2 the destination ip sorry just give me a moment so the source ip will be 10.2 destination ip will be 10.1 source mac will be b destination mac a this is the original packet right that uh, leaf 3 received from endpoint 3 now it is going to put the uh, extra information. So the VXLAN ID field will be the BD unit because it is a switching operation. Uh, endpoint three and endpoint one, they are communicating into the same subnet. So in the VXLAN field, it is going to populate the BD unit information. In the source uh, IP outer address, it is going to put its own app address, which is dot three. 
and the destination IP outer address, it is going to put the app address of leaf one because MAC address A belongs to leaf one. So now via spine, leaf three is going to send this particular information to leaf one. So leaf one is also going to do the uh, same process. It is going to decapsulate this uh, packet. And now it also has uh, uh, two choice, either to save the MAC address from this particular packet or, or the IP address. And the same logic will also uh, be applied here that uh, because the BDV need is uh, populated in the VXLAN ID field, it is only going to save the MAC address. So the MAC address B, now it will save its uh, in its endpoint table and it is reported by, or it is uh, residing behind leaf three. So the tap address of leaf three is dot three. It will remove all the fabric related, uh, related information and it will send the packet to and point one. So this is how the uh, communication uh, will be completed. So this was our case one. In our next section, we will discuss another case.